Okay, I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt show, Helene Olin, who wrote a book called The Index Card, which I love index cards. I'm sorry we don't use them anymore. But the subtitle is even more interesting for us. It's called Why Personal Finance Doesn't Have to Be Complicated. Helene, explain the title. The title comes from my co-writer, Harold Pollock, who interviewed me about my book, Pound Foolish, Exposing the Dark Side of the Personal Finance Industry a few years ago. And during the interview, he said to me something along the lines of, well, you know, this is ridiculous. You know, the personal finance industry is making a mint because, you know, they're telling people, you know, making this all very complicated. And in fact, the basic rules of personal finance can be put on an index card. And Harold and I thought that was very funny and laughed for a moment and went on with our interview. What we didn't realize is that people who were listening to the broadcast took Harold's statement quite seriously and began writing him asking for the index card. And after several people did this, Harold finally decided to make an index card, right? This was a problem, right? There was no index card, so he made one. <laughs> and without really thinking much about it, he writes down you know, some ideas from our interviews, some ideas of his own, puts them on this index card, shoves it up on his blog, and goes to bed, right? Doesn't think about it. Um, and the next thing we both know, this index card has gone viral. People are passing it around and asking us about it. So we finally decided to write a book on it. And that's the origin of the title, The Index Card. All right. Clever title. I like it. Mm-hmm. What is, would you say, the, the number one thing that would be on the top of the index card to, to decomplicate, to simplify personal finance? Well, I mean, we pretty much put it in order, right? But you really want to first save money and second, pay down debt. And third, to put it into big areas, right? Third would be simplify your investment life. And fourth would be protect your life with insurance. And when we say insurance, we mean both individual insurance, whether it's um, homeowners or healthcare like in the United States. And then on the bigger picture, you know, supporting government programs. And that's a huge point for us because the fact is, is most people can't do it totally on their own, despite the fact that they think they can. Um, And we go on about that quite a bit in the book. So these concepts do, in fact, sound simple enough and certainly something you can write on an index card. But why is it that people have so much trouble, let's just say, with something simple like saving money? Well, in the United States, one of the main issues we have here, and I think Israel's got similar issues to an extent, is that money does not keep up with the cost of living, right? People in the United States, I certainly can't speak for Israel, but in the United States, the median household still isn't earning adjusted for inflation what they'd earned in 2000. At the same time, the costs of healthcare, education, housing, and the like have gone up at rates well in excess of inflation. So people have real problems saving money. I mean, it's a basic math problem, right? There's only, you can only make money go so far. You can then compound it by the fact that You know, we go through these things where we like to think our grandparents were incredibly virtuous and they lived these frugal lives and were a bunch of spendthrifts. But the fact of the matter is, is, you know, your grandparents or great grandparents, um, if you're a millennial, didn't have the resources, right? They ran out of money and that was that. Um, We have things like credit cards, you know, and that gives us the ability to meet these costs, right? Unfortunately, there's a lot of evidence to show that when you use these things like credit cards, right? or other virtual payment plans, which are more common now, you're going to spend more money. So it sort of feeds on itself, right? We part with cash. It's much harder for us to part with cash than it is to just whip out a credit card or hand over the phone. And it seems to be a physical thing almost. So it's a question of self-discipline, meaning no, that people it's are not, not even a question money. of No, I mean, I first of all said, first of all, most people have a real problem because they don't have enough. Self-discipline is only the second part of the issue, right? First of all, you need to have enough money to save. If you don't have enough money to save, you're not going to save it. That's the first part of the issue. Secondarily, you know, we live in societies where it's not just self-discipline because you're asking people to basically trump over what's basically preached at you all the time, which is spend money. It's very hard to do that as an individual, right? it's always going to seem easier to just pull out a credit card. I mean, that's why, in fact, if somebody tells me they want to save money, the first thing I tell them is stop walking around with a credit card. Don't have anything automatic. Use cash, which goes counterintuitive to the way we're all increasingly living. We're talking with Helene Olin, who wrote the book, 
the index card why personal finance doesn't have to be complicated. And in fact, she spelled out some of the very simple things that people should do, from saving money and paying down debt to simplifying their investments and protecting themselves with insurance. Let's talk a little bit about that. What sort of protection are people missing the most? Well, people tend to not have, most people now have healthcare insurance in the United States, right? But people tend to be underinsured, which is a huge issue. Deductibles are going up enormously here, um, so that's a big problem. Secondarily, people are often neglecting things like disability insurance and life insurance, and these things exist for a reason. Conversely, you'll see people being overinsured in some areas, and car insurance is a particular issue where people will often have much lower deductibles than they need, right? Because the chances are you're not going to get into that car accident, and you really don't need that lower deductible. Mm -hmm. I see. So they're, they're not really buying the right insurance, even though you think they do need some insurance to cover certain eventualities. But on car insurance, right? So they generally have it, but you know, they're, it's too expensive. I mean, they're getting too much. And conversely, with health insurance, we're often underinsured. And some of that is an affordability problem here, frankly. You know, most people have very high deductibles here. That's a real issue. Um, you can't necessarily get a lower deductible, or if you can, you can't afford it. So it's, again, I want to emphasize really strongly that this is not a blame the victim thing. This is a blame the society piece here. One of the things you said, which I thought made a lot of sense, was that you encourage people to cut up their credit cards because that kind of drags them into the mire of debt. That seems like a good idea. It does, well, I don't encourage it. It allows them to take the control of their money, no? Right. I, I don't want to sound like I pitch this for everybody. I don't. I say if you feel you aren't saving enough money, right, if you can't control, if you feel you're a little out of control with your spending, it's an easy first step to take to see what you would be spending without it, right? I don't do that myself, so I'm certainly not preaching everybody should do that. I That's can't certainly not preaching everybody. Practice what you preach here, so we won't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I think this is actually, this is a big point I made in my book, Pound Foolish. You get a lot of personal finance people routinely advocating stuff they don't do on their own, right? The famous example is Susie Orman, who tells people to invest in the stock market and then tells everybody that she's too afraid to invest in the stock market and only buys, you know, has a tiny little bit of stock and only buys bonds. And then actually the kicker is, is then tells people she's so wealthy, she doesn't need to invest in the stock market. It's sort of hilarious and you shouldn't do that, right? You should not advocate advice you won't follow yourself. I, I feel very strongly about this. Okay, so we, we will write it down that you've kept your credit cards. But yeah. nonetheless, I, listen, many, many people have credit cards. I think the issue is that when it's too easy to spend money and there's too much temptation and you actually can do it, that, that's, where the, you know, <laughs> that's where the problem arises. And needless to say, people are looking all the way up you know, to the government well, the to problem, see how to again, do it. The problem well, first, the problem, again, the problem arises from the fact that most people don't have enough. That's the first start of the problem. I always like to go back and point out that the in the United States, the savings rate was 10% in 1980, um, and then it fell dramatically since, right? And it's actually gone back up in the past few years, but at one point around 2006, 2007, it was close to zero. And part of this is, is that people simply didn't have the money. The other part I will also say is that people at that time were being told, well, you know, your stocks are going up and your houses are going up, you don't need to save money, which is now dismissed as a myth, but is not a myth at all. And in fact, people were told that this was a form of savings. Interesting. All right. People definitely need to learn a lot about managing their money. And one of the great ways to do it is to read the index card. Helene, we are just about out of time. But in the last few seconds, tell me, how can people follow you and follow your work? Oh, I'm on Twitter at Helene Olin is probably the best place to go. I don't keep my website updated these days. So <laughs> like most people, and I'm writing once a month for the nation and I write for some other places as well. And Inc. Very nice. So we'll put a link to that at the show notes of today's show at goldsteinongelt.com. Helene Olin, thanks so much for taking the time. Okay, thank you. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt show with money maven, Doug Goldstein. Check out all of Doug's money ideas at goldsteinongelt.com. Doug specializes in helping people who live outside the United States handle their U.S. investment accounts. If you have a question that you would like answered on the air or off, contact Doug at his website or send him an email to Doug at profile-financial.com. Profile